بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله حمد الشاكرين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد طب القلوب ودوائها ونور الأبصار وضيائها وعافية الأبدان والشفائها وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد كلما ذكرك الذاكرون وغفل عن ذكرك الغافلون سيدنا الإمام الإمام الأعظم النعمان بن ثابت أبو حنيفة سراج الأمة رضي الله تعالى عنه who was born in the year 80 after Hijri and passed away in the year 150 Hijri رحمه الله تعالى is beyond an introduction but an urs a commemoration of his was overdue many years ago in Birmingham we held an urs of al-imam al-a'zum radiyallahu an but this is the first time since that urs that someone has decided to carry out an urs but the greatest celebration for me today was the book this book al-khayrat al-hisan Al-Alama Dhafruddin al-Bihari rahimahullah ta'ala had translated this into Urdu. Many of you may have come across that translation. But this now, alhamdulillah, is the first translation of this work overdue. And this was a, a, a qard, a debt upon us. That firstly, Al-Imam Ahmad bin Hajar al-Haythami al-Makki rahimahullah ta'ala, one of my favorite authors. He was a Shafi'i in school. But he wrote a book on the manaqib of Imam Abu Hanifa rahimallahu ta'ala because those ulama, they were free from ta'assub. Especially in Misr, in Egypt at the time, you had the likes of Imam Abdul Wahhab al-Sha'rani rahimallah who wrote his al-Mizan, al-Mizan al-Kubra. And he, that al-Mizan, he was a Shafi'i in school, but the Mizan covered all four schools, all four Sunni schools that he said, the schools are bain al-azimati wa rukhsa which is what between a strict position and an easy position in every school you will find a position which is easy and a position which is difficult allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down the revelation leaving some room for differences of opinion and al-imam zahid al-kawthri rahimallah ta'ala states they only differ in about 20 percent of the legal rulings the four schools but there was a, a major hikmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in permitting some differences, some disputes. Why? One of them, as mentioned by Imam Jalaluddin Abdul Rahman al Suyuti, Rahimallah ta'ala, Jazilul Mawahib, Fi Ikhtilaf al Madahib, he mentions, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala permitted us to recite Al Quran al Kareem in the Qiraat, that today we have 10 Qiraat. There was a time in the Ummah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam where we had 12 madahib. All of them in, in dhatharat, meaning they passed away. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala sha'at hikmatullah, the wisdom of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to only permit four to survive. And Al-Imam Abdul Wahhab al-Sha'rani, rahimahullah ta'ala, quotes Sidi Ali al-Khawas, one of the major arifin billah, rahimahullah ta'ala, he states, all four are like the four fingers of the hand. They reach to the palm, like the four fingers get to the palm. All four take you to the haqiqah, to the reality. And when some of the Arifin Billah, they met Sayyiduna Khidr Ali Salam, he gave this example that all four take you to one haqiqah, which what ultimately the purpose of ibadah is ma'rifatullah, is knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this was a qard upon us and our brother, the younger Mawlana Muhammad Nizam, Ashraf Hafizahullah Ta'ala has performed a great task by translating this work and I commend him for this action. It encourages not only myself, it encourages everyone else to carry out such type of work that we have this beautifully printed, uh, nicely typesetted with also a bookmark, how, how I like my works. Uh, uh, if you notice in Islam and Atheism, there is also a bookmark. This is knowing your reading public. 
knowing that there is a reading public. And I would like to say today, in today's uh, gathering and commemoration of Imam Al-A'zam, Rahimallah Ta'ala, and Imam Ahmad Rida Khan, Rahimallah Ta'ala, is that we, the Sunni public, must remain as a reading public. If everyone here read one book a week, in 52 weeks, you would have read 52 books. Now, there are some people who believe cigarettes are mubah. Here, I'm not to, here to discuss that issue. But on a cigarette packet in a week, you spend over 15 pound a week. Correct? And many of us, they will eat in takeaways and dessert parlors. Every day they eat, some of them, they grow out, outgrow themselves. But you spend all that money, waste all that money, and now, unfortunately, young people are involved in spending money on, on drugs and on, on other things. If you spent a small amount of money on a book a week, one book a week, in one year you will have 52 books, and you read the book in a week. This will not take you a week to read. But let's say you read this in a week. We stretch the time. You read one book a week, in one year you will have 52 books. If you read for 10 years, you will have 520 books. And then in 20 years, you will have 1,040 books that you read cover to cover. So many of us who are young, people who are younger than me, people who are in their teenage years, make an intention that this could be a karama of Imam Al-A'zam radiallahu an, a karama of Imam Ahmad Rida Khan rahimahullah ta'ala. What? That many young people make a promise to themselves that they will become a reading public, that you will read more. How to read? When you read a book, if you find a word difficult, highlight the word, go and check a dic dictionary, go and check the pronunciation, how to pronounce the word correctly, make notes on the inside cover. Uh, you make notes on the inside cover or in the inside page, what notes you need to refer back to. And then you are even have a bookmark within, within this book. And then you, go, you place the book on the shelf. Many years later, when you return back to the book, you check your inside notes you will know where to go back to, where to benefit from. And if you read 52 books in a year, this is immense knowledge of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So at least start with this book. So the book is here being sold here. Go out and buy the book and buy the book for yourselves and gift the book to others. So because so many people now they say we are Hanafi. But what do you know about Imam Al-A'zam radiallahu an? Do you even know his name? Do you even know what year he was born in and what year he passed away in? Do you know how many books and works he wrote? Do you know the names of his students? Do you know who Al-Imam Muhammad al-Shaybani rahimahullah was? Do you know who Al-Imam Abu Yusuf Ya'qub bin Ibrahim al-Ansari rahimahullah ta'ala was? Do you know the names of these individuals? What contributions they made to Al-Ummah al-Islamiyah? One major contribu contribution of the school was that this school was the major, um, the mihwar, the pivotal point for the fatwa for the likes of Harun al-Rashid rahimahullah ta'ala. That Al-Imam Al-Qadi Abu Yusuf rahimahullah ta'ala was the Qadi at the time of Harun al-Rashid. And Al-Imam Al-Qadi Abu Yusuf rahimahullah was a wise Qadi. He was a wise Qadi. In his time, for instance, there was a fatwa given that one of the Ahlul Kitab, the Ahlul Dhimma, will be executed. The people, the, uh, the one of the Muslims will be executed for what? For having killed one of the Ahlul Dhimma. So there was an upheaval. The people said, how can you kill a Muslim for having killed a Christian? So Harun al-Rashid, rahimullah, he went to Al-Imam Al-Qadi Abu Yusuf Rahimullah. And he said, save me from this difficulty. So Al-Imam Al-Qadi Abu Yusuf Rahimullah, he went and checked, has this person paid the jizya? When it became clear he had not paid the jizya, he did not permit for the person to be killed. The upheaval stopped straight away. He stopped an entire revolution based on one fatwa. This was the wisdom of the, the fuqaha of the Hanafi school. And this is why the Hanafi school governed the entire Ottoman Caliphate for 800 years. And then you had the Mughal dynasty that 
Aurangzeb, Rahimullah Ta'ala, what did he have? Uh, he had the dastur written in accordance with what law? In accordance with the Hanafi fiqh. And likewise, as Sultan Nuruddin Zangi, Rahimullah Ta'ala, was Hanafi. While, while as Sultan Salahuddin Al Ayyubi, Rahimullah, was Shafi'i. Within the Levant region, you had both madhabs. They would give qada judgment according to both madhabs. But the Hanafi madhab governed the majority of the Muslim world for hundreds of years. And Al Imam Abdul Wahab al Sha'rani, Rahimullah Ta'ala, states it will be the last madhab to disappear because it was the first madhab from the existing madhahib that was established by no less than Al Imam Al A'zam and Nu'man bin Thabit rahimahullah ta'ala. Those of you who visit Baghdad, you should make it essential to visit the grave of Al-Imam Al-A'zam radiyallahu anhu. Al-Imam Al-Shafi'i Muhammad bin Idris Al-Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala. When he went to the grave, the dariha of Al-Imam Al-A'zam radiyallahu anhu, he beseeched Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the wasilah, with the intercession of Al-Imam Al-A'zam radiyallahu anhu. As mentioned in the Tariq of Baghdad, of Abu Bakr Ahmad bin Thabit al-Baghdadi, known as al-Khatib al-Baghdadi, in his book Tariq al-Baghdad, in the volume 13 of the Darul Fikr dish. And when he done tawassul through al-Imam al-A'zam radiyallahu an, he also did not raise his voice with Amin bil-Jahar, saying the Amin loudly, and the raf'ul yadain. He did not do the raf'ul yadain, raising the hands, out of respect for Imam al Azam radiallahu an. So whenever you go to Baghdad, those of you who visit Baghdad, you must visit the grave of Imam al Azam radiallahu ta'ala anhu and remember the revival of the Ummah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam is only by the way of the way of the four Imams. Al Aimmatul Arba'a, Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'a is defined by the four Madahib. That anyone who is from the Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'a is Mutaqayyid by the four schools and this is why it's essential that if we say that we we follow a salaf salihun and the quran and sunnah that the quran and the sunnah is understood in the way of the understanding of a salaf salihun then the understanding of a salaf salihun is contained within the four schools that if someone follows any one of the four schools he is following the understanding of a salaf salihun the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, خَيْرُ الْقُرُونِ قَرْنِي ثُمَّ الَّذِينَ يَلُونَهُمْ ثُمَّ الَّذِينَ يَلُونَهُمْ The best of generations is my generation, then those who come after them, meaning the pious from amongst them, excluding the impious, and then those who come after them. And the best of them, their teachings have been preserved in al-madhahib al-arba'ah, in the four Sunni schools. And this is why we, as Sunnis, today we need to preserve the legacy. Look at this, a Shafi'i scholar writing on the life of Al-Imam Al-A'zam radiallahu an, and he even refers to him as Al-Imam Al-A'zam, as the greatest Imam, Al-Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah ta'ala. This is why before you leave this conference today, it's essential that you read this book and you understand the importance of Following one of the madhahib, al madhahib al arbaa aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa atubu ilayh. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Continuing from where I left. Al-Imam al-Bukhari rahimahullah ta'ala narrates in his sahih that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam said لو كان الإيمان في ثريا لناله رجال من الفارس. and in another version of the same hadith, لو كان الدين. so in one hadith, it's لو كان الإيمان. and in another hadith, لو كان الدين. that if the religion, meaning الدين here, is in reference to al Islam, and the other لو كان الإيمان if faith إيمان was Fithuraya, which is the Pleiades, the, the Pleiades, the constellation of stars, if Iman or religion or Deen itself was in the skies, meaning with the stars, Lanalahu Rijalu Min Al Faris, 
that men from Al-Faris, meaning from Persia, would have attained this religion. Some of the commentators, they mention under this, that this may be a reference to Sayyiduna Salman Al-Farsi radiallahu anhu. But as the generations went by, it became clear that the hadith was in reference to later generations. And from amongst them was no less than Al-Imam Al-A'zam al numan bin Thabit, Al-Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah ta'ala. That the religion, that if it was in the Pleiades, in the constellation of stars, the men from Al-Faris would have attained it. That from amongst them, the foremost from the Ahlul Faris was Sayyiduna Al-Imam Al-A'zam radiallahu ta'ala anhum. What were his contributions in this regard to Al-Fiqh Al-Islami? Remember, a book which is ascribed to him is known as Al-Fiqh Al-Akbar. Why is the book referred to as Al-Fiqh Al-Akbar? Al-Fiqh Al-Akbar is in reference to the greater Al-Fiqh, which is understanding that is Al-Aqidatul al islamiyah that the Islamic belief is referred to as Al-Fiqh Al-Akbar. Secondly, the word Al-Fiqh, Al-Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah ta'ala himself, he defines the word Fiqh. He states, Ma'rifatun nafsi ma laha wa ma alayha. If someone ever asks you or inquires what is the definition of Al-Fiqh itself, you just say Ma'rifatun nafsi ma laha wa ma alayha, which is what? Knowing the self, ma laha wa ma alayha. What is against it and what is for it and what is against it. This is the very definition of al-fiqh. But when we say al-fiqh al-akbar in reference to belief and creed, there was the organization of al-fiqh, which Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah ta'ala, one of his major contributions was to organize al-fiqh jurisprudence in the chapter headings that we see today and recognize in works like the Mukhtasar of Imam Al-Quduri Rahimullah. From amongst the chapter headings, what we know, notice in Mukhtasar Al-Quduri is we notice Kitab Al-Tahara, then Kitab Al-Salah, Kitab Al-Zakat, Kitab Al-Sawm, Kitab Al-Hajj, Kitab Al-Buyu', Kitab Al-Waqf, all these chapter headings, organization of Al-Fiqh. Al-Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah ta'ala inspired that early generation like the, as I mentioned, Al-Imam Ahmad Al-Quduri rahimahullah was a resident of Baghdad. And they say with regard to his book that anyone who studies that book, his risk is guaranteed. This is in order to exhort people to study the book. In fact, what they mentioned from the fawaid, from the benefits of that book, as mentioned by Al-Imam Abdul Ghani Al-Ghunayn Al-Maydani, or the, the Mu'alliqeen, the commentators on his Al-Lubab, they mention that one of the fawaid, the benefits of reciting the work Al-Quduri, is that when a virus spreads amongst people, if they recite the work Al-Quduri, the virus will be, be removed from among society. The meaning of this is that during what people refer to as the pandemic, when that pandemic was widespread, if people had recited the work Al-Quduri, involved themselves and busied themselves with recitation of Al-Fiqh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have removed the virus very quickly. Meaning as a wird, al-wird al-am, if people read the work Al-Quduri, it would have gone. But later on within the Hanafi school, you had the likes of Imam Abu Ja'far al-Tahawi, rahimahullah ta'ala, who wrote also a mukhtasar, which was later commented upon by no less than Abu Bakr al-Razi al-Jassas, rahimahullah, the author of Ahkam al-Quran. He wrote an entire commentary on the, the mukhtasar of Imam Abu Ja'far al-Tahawi, rahimahullah ta'ala. Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah ta'ala, that was one of his major contributions to the science of al-fiqh, that people made abwab chapter headings. But additionally, what is referred to as al-qawa'id al-fiqhiyya, which is legal maxims. What are legal maxims? If you pay attention here, don't worry, you'll get to see this sign book. Pay attention here. Al-qawa'id al-fiqhiyya, otherwise you won't understand the point. 
القواعد الفقهية are legal maxims. What are those legal maxims? Those legal maxims which govern our fiqh, our jurisprudence, by which, by way, we know how to determine and extract legal rulings. Like, الضرورات تبيح المحظورات. That necessities validate those things which are prohibited. This is a legal maxim. It's a universal law extracted, extracted from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But the major contribution was done by Imam Abu Hanifa Rahmallahu Ta'ala. Prior to him, the legal maxims may have been understood, but they were not written down by the ulama uh, of that time. Have all the signatures been done? Yes. So, so then, Imam Abu Hanifa Rahmallahu Ta'ala, he organized the Al Qawaid Al Fiqhiyah. Like as I mentioned, but there are five qawaid, five major maxims that govern all of fiqh. If someone knows those maxims, they can understand and extrapolate so many legal rulings, but there are hundreds of qawaid fiqhiyah. And then you have qawaid fiqhiyah, which only apply to certain chapters within al-fiqh al-islami, Islamic law itself. Al-Imam Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah ta'ala, he was the one who lay down the foundations for those laws, those laws that govern our fiqh today. All of this is within the hasanat of Imam Al-Azam radiallahu ta'ala anhu. So, concluding with those remarks, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to enable us to understand the contributions of Imam Al-Azam rahimahullahu ta'ala to Al-Ummah uh, al-Islamiyah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raise us with Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullahu ta'ala أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم وأتوب إليه